Hello. So I've been doing some very basic sculpting in Blender and because I, I like hard surface and I'm more used to ZBrush, there's a couple of brushes that I'm missing. Most notably H polish and uh, a planar type brush. And you can recreate them in Blender. In fact, I'm gonna try to do that at the end of this video. But first, just to showcase what these brushes do to anyone who is unaware, H polish, is very similar to a scrape type of brush, but it's more about pushing the surface down and creating a very, very clean uh, surface with sharp edges than it is about just removing material. So it does this and it protects the edges very, very well. I feel like my intensity is turned on. Oh, I think it is. Okay, there we go. So very good uh, hard surface brush. You can also use it to fill in gaps very easily. So if you have a depression like something like this, very deep. So we can clean that out very easily with H polish because it, it preserves the edges very well. So even though my brush is a little bit larger than the area I'm sculpting in, notice how stuff out in the outside isn't really unaffected just because it's on a different plane. And like I said, we can sort of recreate that in Blender. So don't worry about it just sort of demoing what this brush does. So very cool. And we also have a planar brush. But planar is a little bit tricky because by default, if you use it on a, on a surface that's already flat or that's curving down, it seems like it doesn't work or it's not doing anything. And that's because your first click, uh, the area where you first click, or rather the pixel, uh, is gonna determine the orientation and the height of the plane. So if you have a surface that's curving down and you click right here, everything else can't really be cut because it's already at a lower level. So what you have to do is change the embed value. I have it here in my custom UI, but you'll have to go to brush, depth, and either change the slider or move this up and down to tell it to, to go a little bit deeper. This is basically the plane cut offset. So I'll do that. And now we can cut inwards. Now, you don't usually want to set this too high. You might want to set it to a lower value to give you opportunity to determine how deep you want to go. So I'll do a little uh, plain cut like that. And if you want more, then you will just reapply it in the same area. And uh, another cool thing about it is that we can use it in reverse. I mean, you can do that with most brushes, but this is very cool because we can, if we apply it normally on a flat surface, it does nothing. But if we reverse it, we can fill in this little hole right here, for instance. Pretty neat. And we can also raise the surface. Do that. So also a very cool brush. However, it might be a little bit annoying to deal with this slider so often. So in comes another type of brush called a trim adaptive. So I'm gonna press B because I don't have this hotkeyed. T for trim, and here it is. If you don't have it here, just search for it by pressing comma to open the light box and search for uh, the trim somewhere in here. Brush, here is trim, it's probably in there if you don't have it in your brush panel. So it's very similar to the planar brush. If I apply it right here, it seems like it's not doing anything, except instead of messing with the inbit value, you change the height of the plane dynamically on the surface. So check this out. I choose a plane height first, and while holding down the stroke, move to a different area at a different height, and that's gonna change the height of the plane. So now I can just go back and remove all of that material without ever having to mess with that slider. So it's a little bit more, uh, at least more fun to use, I guess, because you don't ever have to change that. So I can start a cut, and I can say, you know, I want it to be a little bit deeper, there we go, and then just go back and we have that like that. So the first click is still very important to determine the orientation of that plane, but the height can be changed at any time. So I can create some very cool hard surface stuff like that, I just start cutting, change the plane, go back and do that. Let's do the same thing here, a little cut. Okay, that, that looks horrible, but I think you get the idea. You can get some pretty cool effects with this and it doesn't work that well on the symmetry line because it starts to sample itself for the height. So if I do this, change the height, and then I go back over the center line, it sort of like goes in deeper than it should and gets a little confused. So you might want to disable symmetry for that. 
it would do that. Do this. Really cool hard surface. <laughs> Not really, but the point is to just demonstrate what these brushes did. So let's actually go to Blender and try to remake some of those brushes. So let's start off with recreating the H polish brush first. And the closest tool we have is the scrape tool, which is surprisingly clean by default. So you can just use it as it is right now and do hard surface with that, but it doesn't preserve the edges that well. So you do have to be careful with it, but it's, it's surprisingly nice to use. But if you really want to make it more into an H polish brush, first thing we got to do is duplicate this and create a new preset and then name this to whatever we want, H polish. And now we can switch presets right here. So this would be the default and this is the one we just made. Let's click on that. They each, they all have their own settings. So the setting that I'm looking for is plane trim and then set this to something like 0.2. So what this setting controls is how further away from the surface you can be before you stop being affected. So if I set it really low, like I just did, all of these birds that are just really far away from this original plane are not gonna be affected. And that's what gives us the illusion of edge preservation. So turning that setting on makes it a little bit more like H polish. So there's also another setting we might want to consider, and that is normal radius. In ZBrush, this is set a little bit lower for H polish, but let me just demo what it does first. If I want to create a chamfer right here on this sharp edge, it's super easy right now. I just do that. And the reason it's so easy compared to in ZBrush is because this value right here controls how much of my brush reticle, this red circle right here, is being used to average out the normals. And basically, if I turn this down really, really far, now I need to be super accurate to be able to bevel this edge. If I'm not, and I instead place the cursor a little bit more to this side, then I just won't be able to get that chance perfectly. So if you're wondering why would you ever turn this value down then if it, if it makes things harder, well, it makes it harder to chamfer the sharp edge, but it makes it easier to prevent my brush from getting the wrong normals. So if I want to flatten this side, I can do it perfectly even though my brush is so large and it's sampling a lot of this as well. So if I leave this at the default, what happens? If I want to flatten this edge, it's not exactly flattening it. It's creating an entirely new plane because it's sampling a lot of this side as well. So that's why you might want to turn this down to 0.2 or if you do a lot of chamfers then maybe leave it at 0.3 or higher so that you, you get the best of both worlds, I guess, something like that. So let's just do the same example we had in the ZBrush. Something pretty deep. Um, let's just smooth it out to give it a fighting chance and H polish. And it's not exactly like ZBrush's H polish. It does curve a lot more. I'm not entirely sure why. There's probably some sort of setting I can adjust to make it nicer. However, fill also seems to work just fine. So the reverse effect, that works great. Don't have to worry about that one. But yeah, that's H polish, just plain trim and reduce the normal radius a little bit. And now for the planar brush. So we also want to start with the scrape tool. Let's create a duplicate and rename it to planar. Planar is so hard. There you go. And the settings that we're looking for, or at least the main settings, are these two, normal and plain uh, under use original. So I'm sure you can see how I move my brush over the surface of the mesh and uh, I sample different normals. The, the circle is basically changing orientation. So by activating this setting right here, I lock in that rotation. Once I start the stroke, the orientation isn't going to change. And by clicking this one right here, the height of that plane is not gonna change. So this one is for locking rotation and this one is for height. So let's just see what this effect gives us. So this is effectively our planar brush. That's all we had to do, right? But you might notice how on surfaces that are curving down, it doesn't seem to do much. So the way we change our embed value in Blender is just by right clicking and we have plane offset very accessible right here. So set this to 0.2 maybe, and now we can dig in a little bit easier. Now you'll also notice how the edges are a little bit soft. That doesn't matter too much if you just like go all around. 
but if it does bother you a little bit, then you can also increase the hardness, 0.9 maybe. And now those edges are gonna be sharper, but now the stepping is more uh, visible. So to adjust the stepping, we could also go down here to stroke, maybe re reduce this to like 4%. Now we have more stepping, but the more you re uh, reduce the spacing, it actually makes the brush more intense. So you might actually want to, uh... oh, this is already turned on, cool. So it still makes the brush more intense, even though this is turned on, weird. So I guess it just helps a little bit. So I might actually want to reduce my plane offset because I have less spacing. There we go. So this is essentially our planar brush. Cool. Now I couldn't figure out a way to make it like ZBrush where, uh, where it's adaptive, where I can control the height by just moving over different areas of the surface, but still keep the orientation locked in. I couldn't figure out how to do that. There might be a way, there might not be, I don't know. This is actually fine for now.